Almost 80 days after the outbreak of violence in Manipur, the nation suddenly woke up to the tall leaders of this country mentioning the northeastern state for the first time in the current context and spelling things as they are. But one may wonder why are the Prime Minister and Manipur Chief Minister N. B. Rain Singh suddenly telling us about the state of their hearts, Manipur? Or why that strange, unfamiliar word, humanity, is coming out from the mouths of other BJP leaders such as Smriti Irani? Wasn't it seditious or outright treason to suggest that rapes could happen in Manipur or that crimes against humanity could take place in PM Modi ruled India? Wasn't it just the other day that women's rights activists who visited the state found themselves in danger of being arrested for sedition, for saying that women had been raped as part of organized, state-sponsored, violence? Oh wait, of course. The other day, there was no video of cookie women in Manipur being paraded naked by a matey mob. If it's not on video, it's not TV worthy. And if it's not TV worthy, it didn't happen. Does it take virility to break radio silence? This time, a video is viral. On millions of smartphone screens, people can watch the worst moment in the lives of these women, being stripped of human dignity and paraded by a mob. Like a Game of Thrones, walk of shame, it has all the elements to induce horror, pity, and excitement that make for viral video content. Who knows this better than that master of the TV and smartphone screen, PM Modi. Hurting hearts must be displayed without delay, tears expertly shed at the temple of democracy. At least until Madhu Kishwar writes her expose telling us the women and the video were, sacrificial victims, of a terrorist conspiracy aimed to defame and persecute Hindus. Let's look closely at B. Rain Singh's tweet. He says, Manipur police took, suo moto cognizance, i.e., didn't wait for a formal complaint to initiate an investigation of the incident immediately after the video surfaced. They went out and promptly made the first arrest. Police couldn't not be in the know. Manipur police didn't get to know of the atrocity when the video surfaced. Rather, the police was in the loop beforehand. A little context would help establish how. On the 3rd of May, violence broke out in Manipur and people of the Kuki community began to face attacks from the Meiti community. A day later, a Meiti mob allegedly stripped, paraded, and gang raped these three women from the Kuki Zo community, while they were under the protection of a police team. The police knew, their team witnessed this atrocity, after all. They must also have seen the perpetrators gleefully film the atrocity, a trophy of their triumphant exploit. If the police knew so did B. Rain Singh. But he said nothing. The video wasn't viral yet, at least outside Manipur. The survivors were not silent. They filed a complaint with the police as several reports suggest. They wanted to be heard so badly but were noticed by the state and central governments, and television media in India, only when once the video of them being paraded naked, stripped of clothes, dignity, went viral. Their active voices seeking justice didn't count, seeing them naked, helpless, humiliated, and silent did. On the 15th of May, for instance, a YouTube channel of the Zomi Students Federation carried an audio account of a 13-minute interview with survivors of this incident. It's a piece of sober documentation which responsibly avoids revealing the speakers. But this was not picked up by India's electronic media. A survivor's voice, telling her story in an emotionless voice, in a language that is, foreign, to Delhi, Mumbai newsrooms is, let's face it, boring. Bring us a video with the survivors silent but naked, being assaulted by the mob, and we'll think about it.